The rain showed up, but Clemson did not. Welcome back to the series. Marshall knocked off number 15 Clemson at home last week in what proved to be a blowout 38-3. Marshall's big win vaulted them to number one in the first batch of the college football playoff rankings. Today, Syracuse is on deck. I'm Kimbrough Plays. Let's go. As mentioned, our thundering herd sits in the top spot of the CFP rankings. Florida, Penn State, and Georgia round out the rest of the top four, but some goofy teams that we don't usually see up here like Arkansas State, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Stanford find themselves inside the top 10 as well. 30 or more points in every game this year, number one in the college football playoff rankings, and zero ranked opponents left on the schedule for Marshall. I think actually the biggest test we might face is just maintaining our focus against much easier competition for the rest of this stretch. Marshall, only ahead by one game in the Atlantic Division, but holds the head-to-head -head tiebreaker against Clemson and Boston College. Today, we look to get another game in hand versus Syracuse. Meanwhile, it's Virginia Tech who's in control of the Coastal side, 5-1 on the year, 3-0 in the conference. The Hokies might be legit. Looking to add to its number one class in the country, four guys are coming to campus this week, headlined by two really good JUCO prospects. First guy we'll talk about, 80 overall defensive tackle Tyrone Hooper. NCAA 14 doesn't properly rank JUCO guys. He's listed as a three-star, and he's only the number 46 defensive tackle, but clearly he's one of the better tackles in the class. Travis Rogers is also visiting four-star number nine ranked outside linebacker and an absolute tackling machine. We have a huge lead for him. I'm excited he's coming to campus. Ryan Newell is a two-star JUCO, but he's a 78 overall run-blocking guard. He would be a great addition to that offense of line group. Lastly, three-star depth linebacker Fred McNamara. Honestly, we just really need to load up on bodies in the linebacker room. Okay, let's look at today's matchup. Syracuse, 4-2, coming off of a loss last week, but it's a pretty good squad. B overall, B plus on offense, B minus on defense. They look like they're just a solid ACC team. And as we dive into Dino Babers, the head coach, he's working in year four of a seven-year extension. He's been above 500 for four of the last five seasons. And honestly, that's pretty good being at their level. He's done a nice job with this program. And the roster has some talent in very key spots. First and foremost, a 98 overall wide receiver who's 6'5 jumps off the page at you, but their running back one and wide receiver two are solid, three of their four defensive line starters are solid, and they look really good at left and right tackle. I mean, compared to Clemson, Miami, and Florida State's rosters, Syracuse obviously isn't world beaters, but this team is competent. But like it often comes down to, we gotta figure out who's the guy under center. And for Syracuse, it's Lorne Gooden, a 79 overall redshirt freshman, and I really like what I see. 84 speed, he's sudden, a good athlete, 90 acceleration, and a big arm, 87 arm strength. We'll have to see if he's ready for this moment. Fuqua has over 1,700 passing yards and 27 touchdowns through just seven games. He has been dealing. Gooden at QB1 for Cuse, as we mentioned. 1,200 yards passing and a 10-2 touchdown interception split. That's pretty solid. Marshall will get the ball first as Eric Love is going to settle under it at his four. He's going to return this one. Breaking this one outside about the 25-yard line. He's across the 30, 45. He's across the 50. Gets drugged, breaks a tackle. He's across the 30, down to the 25, 20, 77-yard opening kickoff return for Eric Love and Marshall is set up. James Fuqua taking over from the 20 zone read keeper on first down and he's got a convoy. Touchdown. Marshall, he takes one kickoff return and one play from scrimmage on offense. Very simple zone read keeper. William Matthews out there in front. He doesn't even have anyone to block. He scores the touchdown first. Marshall, just like that, up seven to nothing in this one. And we have our first studio update, and it's a big one. NC State, who we will see in two weeks, gets the big win, 35-28 against number 18 Clemson who has now slid to four and three. They have been reeling ever since they lost to us. Pittsburgh takes care of West Virginia. Miami holds on against Duke and Northwestern gets a solid win in the Big Ten against Iowa. Wow, what a start for Marshall as Gooden has the first possession of the game on second and seven. He's gonna flip it out to Josh Hogue on the screen play, gets 12. Gooden on play action on the quick dart. He's got it to Quentin Williams who's got 14 few plays later as we're going to jump around. It's a third and five from midfield. Gooden 
Looking across the middle as he throws it a little too far inside. Kenneth Daniels on the coverage. Good and two for four on this first possession. It's a fourth and five fake. Rodgers, the punter, has pulled up the throw, and Scott Ward is there to make the interception. Gets tackled down, and that is a huge play as they try to run the fake punt. This is like the third or fourth time this season a team has tried to fake punt us, but Scott Ward says no way, and he is down injured. We'll have to take a look. Ensuing possession after the turnover. It's a quick third and six for Marshall, but we hit the play action pass to Brennan Armstrong as we find him for a 19 yard catch. First down, second and two. Turn and give to Ethan Payne, getting some early action. One of his first carries of the day as Payne gets outside on the left, has a 16 yard rush and a first down for Marshall, who's on the edge of the red zone already. After a sack and an incompletion, it's a third and 25, and look at this strike. Lou Walker, 29 yard reception. He's down inside the five. What a heck of a play here. As you see, we sort of high-low the free safety on that side of the field. Lou Walker's the in-breaking route, and he makes it happen. Second and goal. Fuqua in the shotgun, throws a strike over the middle. Chancellor Bright from four yards out on the slant. Fuqua's already four for four, 61 yards, and now a touchdown pass as Chancellor Bright gets into the end zone, and Marshall's jumping all over them. 14-0 is the score already. Good it only held the ball once and he's already down 14 nothing as he gets another shot to come out here and show what he can do nice running ability there shoves off a tackle gets nine yards very next play good and in shotgun again we send five as he sneaks outside the right Bruh. side breaks another tackle and another and then slides down to protect himself really good stuff by the athletic red shirt freshman but they're in trouble here third and nine as he looks to set up the screen no. Corey Brown the true freshman safety ranges over and stops PG Jay Harvey. It's a tackle for loss and it's going to force the Syracuse punt and they do actually punt it this time as Marshall has a decent starting field position at their own 35 on first down into William Matthews. 17 yards and a good throw fight by Fuqua puts it right on the face mask. William Matthews has the 17 yards and a first down. Couple plays later, second and eight. Fuqua looking out to the right side. He's got John Bass on a little out route comebacker. Nine yards and a first down. As the first quarter is running out of time, seven step drop for Fuqua looking over the middle for Brennan Armstrong and this one is intercepted. Roy Day recovering it. He's going to get brought down by Brian Justice. This one hurts. We know we're good for an interception a game, but I really thought Brennan Armstrong got the separation on that break, but Day actually just takes a flat angle. You'll get a good view from that angle. He just kind of undercuts it and Dino Babers is fired up as they get the stop. Man, that hurts. 14-0 our score as we get the second quarter going. There's Gadsden, the second. Aronde Gadsden has 11 yards. He's just short of the first, his first reception of the day. Now third and inches. Good and over the middle and man coverage. He's got some room to Gilliam. Chasing him down is Corey Brown and he does finally get to him, but not after a 52-yard reception as Gooden just stands in there real nice and strong as Ryan Young, the linebacker's bearing down on him. And unfortunately, Corey Brown, the true freshman, just gets burnt on this route. Luckily, he recovers, which I appreciate the effort, but man, oh man. We go ahead and set them up. And on second and goal, Rashid Price does a nice job bringing down Josh Hogue, the running back. It's going to leave them with a third and goal as they look to give it to Harvey, their backup running back who gets hit initially and then slowed up. And Jermaine Johnson and the boys are going to rally, forcing the fourth and goal. Syracuse elects to kick. They take their three points. And that's a really nice drive response for them to get some points on the board. First and 10, next possession as we turn and give to Ethan Payne on first down. And he does a really good job powering forward 10 yards as he has 19 yards on five carries in this one. Fuqua, few plays later, throwing up the seam to Brennan Armstrong. It's a 29-yard pitch and catch as Armstrong, just so good running vertically down the field. He makes a huge play and Marshall set up again across the 30. Fuqua yeah. under pressure on second and 10. He's going to get drugged down. Really nice play by Leon Lowry as he just kind of comes in off the edge unblocked we tried to flip this one out into the flats to Ethan Payne but he got in there so quick we couldn't get rid of the ball third and 19 not a lot of plays in the playbook for this one as we check it down to William Matthews he's got four yards and that's going to set up a 51 yard field goal from Kevin Hayes four minutes left to go in the first half he drills it really nice big leg Kevin Hayes we know what he's all about Marshall takes the 17-3 lead up two scores 
Fourth possession of the game for Syracuse. Gooden looking left on first and 10. Finds Gilliam for 14. It's a first down. Gooden's looked good. Six of eight, 99 yards. A third and two here. Flips it over the middle to Williams, who breaks three tackles. Fights off of Daniels and stays on his feet. Gets out of bounds. He just completely shakes Mario Sanders in man coverage. It's a super simple pitch and catch for Gooden. He's gotten a lot of really good pass protection as well as they convert the third and inches. 2.16 to go. Gooden looking right to Gilliam on the little half check down. He's got 14 yards as he has a little run after the catch. An efficient 8 of 10 for Gooden. 133 left to go in the first half. It's a third and six. Looking left, it's lobbed to Gilliam again. Seven yard reception. Syracuse takes their first time out of the half. But it sets them up with a first and goal from the three. Gooden in shotgun. Standing in there. Wide open out the back door. Quinton Williams. It's a three yard touchdown. This is very reminiscent to the play we ran with Tommy Chambers. Slants across the middle and just leaks someone out the backside. He is wide ass open. Gooden finds him and gets Syracuse into the end zone. 17-10 as we creep towards halftime. Looks like Marshall's going to get one more chance. We have all three timeouts. Over a minute left to go in this second quarter. First down pass outside to Tommy Chambers is good for 10. Sets up a second in inches. Five-step drop. Fuqua looking right. Hits John Bass along the sideline as he steps out of bounds. A few plays later, it's a second and three from the 37. Fuqua scrambling out the left side. Now tucking, looking downfield, but he's going to get outside. Stops the clock as we've taken one of our timeouts. We have two left. 54 seconds left. Fuqua looking left. William Matthews with the acrobatic catch. Really beautiful stuff here on the sideline. Matthews leaps, spins, and gets two feet down on the sideline. He's fired up, and it gives us a first and goal around the eight-yard line. Zone read keeper James Fuqua is going to get into the end zone. What an efficient two-minute drill by Marshall. We might have scored too quick. Only used one timeout. Marched it all the way down the field. Fuqua kind of takes a late hit in the end zone. I don't appreciate that, but nevertheless, he's fired. Eight yard touchdown run, his second on the day. Marshall up 24 10. Still 47 seconds left to go in two timeouts for Syracuse. As we heat them up on first down, they get it out to Gadsden. He's got five, 43 seconds and counting. Gooden over the middle. It's Gilliam. He's going to get hit hard by Folk. He's got nine yards. Syracuse takes their second timeout. 26 seconds, second and 10. As they flip it out the side to Jeff Sapp, he steps out of bounds and stops the clock. Going to leave him with a third and two, 20 seconds left. Gooden all day to throw, lobbed late out to the sideline to Williams again. He's got the first down, 17 seconds. They elect not to use the timeout. Gooden, check it down to Gilliam. He's going to be tackled in bounds. Got to imagine they're going to use a timeout, right? Right? Clock ticks. They try to go hurry up. At least a launch to the end zone. Anything. Bruh. And the CPU blows it again. As the logic is known to do, they completely fumble the two-minute drill situation with the ball at midfield, and it's going to mean a 24-10 halftime score in this one. Really strong stuff by Syracuse. They really came on in that second quarter after getting down 14-0. Both teams basically 180 pass yards, similar in rush yards, similar in time of possession, and we each have a turnover. Despite the score being a 14-point ball game, it's actually been much closer statistically than that. Time to get the third quarter rolling. Gooden in shotgun. Well protected throwing to Aronde Gadsden. He's got 10 yards. He was short of the first down. They eventually converted it. Couple short plays leaves him with a third and five and they try to go nope. draw play to Josh Hogue. And it is a TFL for Rashid Price as they get a little cute. Try to catch us napping, but we were ready for it. So quickly, the Syracuse possession ends, and it's Marshall football just like that to start the third quarter. We didn't even go 30 seconds into the into the third. Eight-yard reception out of the backfield for Ethan Payne. Now second and two, lobbed towards the sideline. William Matthews takes a bump, but holds on. He's got four yards and picks up the first. Second and eight, turning and giving Ethan Payne. It opens up a lane for him, and he's got space. Now does he have the speed? Has Tommy Chambers out there as a convoy leading him, and he's going to score. 66-yard touchdown rush for Ethan Payne. We know he's been the best back on this team, but his only Achilles heel has been the speed. But check this out as all the Syracuse defensive linemen get too far upfield, and somehow he's got the wheels to outrun all these guys in the secondary. Just like that, Marshall quick scores, and they've got the 21-point lead. Wow. 
You don't see that very often from Ethan Payne as he breaks out a big one and has home run breakaway speed. I don't know if he had too much left in the tank, but he's able to score that one. Throw to Sap on first down to start the drive. Had eight yards, now Lauren Good. He's going to get a nine-yard scramble and pick up the first. He's been really effective with his legs. Give him credit. Now design quarterback run as they get outside. Running up the sideline. Watkins eventually pulls him down, but Gooden's got 20. Really well blocked up. Good scheme. Utilizing the quarterback run game while they have the hats advantage in the box. First and 10. 434 left to go in the third. Looking left. Down the sideline to Gadsden the second. And he's going to get drugged down, but it's a 28-yard reception as we were in this, like, cover two look that's supposed to have Eric Love kind of in the buzz hole out there, but he just lobs this one in beautifully along the sidelines of his huge target. And Syracuse set up inside the 10-yard line again. First and goal, Gooden looking left late to Josh Hogue, the running back out of the backfield, and he is going to get into the end zone. My goodness, what a possession there by Syracuse as they march it down the field. Hogue has the six-yard touchdown reception. Aiden Hubbard tried to drag him down before the line to gain, but to no avail. 31-17 is our score. Really nice response here in the midway part of the third quarter as they kick it back off to Casey Smith. Has a couple blockers out the right side, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. He's across the 30, cuts it back in at the 40. It's going to get drugged down. Beautiful return by Casey Smith, showing a little bit of that power. Marshall. Aside from the interception, has been very efficient scoring for their first five possessions. Now, play action on the first play after the return, and we are going to get sacked. A loss of seven. They just send more than we can block. Incomplete on second down leaves us with a third and 17, and we can't get it away. Good man coverage. This time, it's going to be Leon Lowry. He's got the sack of eight yards, and again, they just send more than we have blockers, but they also get home really fast as Fuqua can't get rid of the ball. Marshall has to punt it, and all of the momentum is on Syracuse's nope. side. Well, that's a good way to start the drive. Ryan Young with the TFL. Syracuse has it for the eighth time today. Hogue on the screen, looking to get it set up out of the backfield, and they do effectively. Seven yards and a first down out to Hogue. This time, first and ten, looking right. Good, strong throw across the field to TJ Gilliam, who has been dynamic, eating us up. He has 125 yards on eight catches. Gooden already up to 262 and two scores. These guys have been dicing us up through the air. I did not expect that at all from the redshirt freshman. But it's a few plays later. It's a third and two. Really big play to stop the momentum here from our 26-yard line. Gooden in the shotgun looking left to McNeil. is tight end. Corey Brown shoves him out at the five. But they convert not only another third down, but a big one as they keep the momentum going and they're set up inside the red zone again. First and goal from the five. Gooden speed option. Flips it to Hogue. Can we get to him? Really nice job by Mario Sanders. I believe that was he was stood Hogue up right at the two yard line they're gonna call it the one second and goal inside give Hogue hit in the backfield by carry on Martin who's able to drag him down I don't know who hit who but Martin does eventually make the play big time third and goal as the third quarter is almost over good all day to throw back there and Chaz means on the slant route, the wide receiver comes across the back of the end zone and brings this one in. He had all time to throw. That looked like a Marshall play. You got number two standing back there with nobody around him throwing strikes into the end zone. Syracuse scores again as we get the studio update. North Carolina and Virginia Tech just getting that one going. Big one, as we mentioned, Virginia Tech leading on the other side of the division, and it's another close game. Stanford and Washington, who we took on in week one, tied at 21 with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Wow, 31-24 our score. Final seconds of the third quarter. Syracuse giving us a game. All that we can handle. Eric Love along the left side. Has some room across the 50, across the 35. Shoved out just short of the Syracuse 30. What a huge play. Eric Love has been awesome today in the return game. My goodness. Beautiful work by Eric Love. Last play of the third. Play action. Looking to take a shot. Fuqua hit and gonna go down. And that will do it for the third quarter. Give Syracuse credit. They absolutely come rumbling out of the halftime locker room, fired up. We're onto the fourth quarter in Huntington. Second and 18 after the sack. Pressure coming. Fuqua has a man downfield looking deep towards the end zone for William Matthews and it is picked off by Odom, the corner. And I don't know that this was a bad throw. I'm gonna give 
Boyd Odom the credit on this one. I really like this release by William Matthews. I think the throw is pretty much in rhythm, in stride. Look, he gets a good release. Odom on that trail inside hip. You can make a case that he's not open. Don't throw it. But he has to jump up real high to make the play. And Boyd Odom climbs the ladder and does it. Marshall turns it over. Hogue on first nope. down, and it's another Ryan Young TFL as the run game for Syracuse has been non-existent. Now, second and 11, Gooden flips it out to Dixon, swats off Watkins, gets hit by Daniels, finally pushed out. It's Mark Dixon on a 21-yard reception as Gooden flipped it out late to him and lets his receiver do work. Nope. Second and three, though, it's Harvey trying to get the inside give, and Rasheed Price is there to get the TFL. It sets up another key third down in the fourth quarter. Gooden flipping it out to the sideline. Josh Hardeman can't make the tackle, and it's Chaz Means, the guy who scored the most recent touchdown for Syracuse. 24 yards and a first down. My goodness. We are doing the most right now as we find Dixon again. Flipped out to the sideline. It's a 28-yard reception. Dixon is killing us as Gooden is up over 350 yards passing. Boy, oh boy. And they're set up again. Second and goal. Gooden taking the ball. No. Gets hit. Luckily, David Watkins there to make the TFL. The run D has been stout down at this part of the field, but we are getting gashed through the air. Now a third and goal. Gooden looking left. Coming back to the ball is Knight. McKnight, excuse me, Jake McKnight. I really could have swore he caught this ball in the end zone. His forward progress brings him back out of the end zone. They call him down at the one. It's a fourth and goal, and it's not going to happen. Josh Ho gets stood up. Rashid Price does a heck of a job here, working through the front side of the guard, forces the missed tackle, and it's just enough to let Malcolm Folk and the boys rally, and that's a turnover on downs for Marshall's defense. Holy, what a play there. Marshall taking over at the one. We'll have to see how much that play looms over this game as Marshall gets it back with about five minutes to go, up seven. Syracuse does have all their timeouts, and we are pinned back as we've given it to Ethan Payne about four or five straight carries. It's going to leave us with a third and five, three minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Big play here, flipping it out quickly to Chancellor Bright, and he's going to get wrestled down, but he's got eight yards in the first down. Huge conversion for Marshall. Three minutes to go, first and ten, drifting. Fuqua looking to step up, breaks a tackle in traffic, somehow escapes, avoids a dive, looking downfield still, avoids another one, and he's going to get chucked out of bounds. Clock is going to stop, but that's a 10-yard Houdini play by your Heisman candidate. Second and inch, his very next play. He has John Bass, and he missed him. No way. We decided to take a shot. They sold out for the run. You can see how many people they send blitzed. John Bass gets the single coverage, fights off the press, and Fuqua just airmails him. Oh, that one hurts. That would have been a game sealer. Third and inches, though, we do go inside. Give to Ethan Payne. We convert. They show Coach Mayo calling a timeout. Clearly, Syracuse looking to stop the clock. They use their first. Now, sweep left. Ethan Payne out of shotgun. He's got four yards. Syracuse going to take another timeout. Second and six. Shotgun looking to throw it. Fuqua. Nowhere downfield to throw, just cuts it upfield. Doesn't want to do the incomplete pass, decides to tuck it. They have to use their third and final timeout, and now it's a third and two. Fuqua, well protected, launching down the sideline, and it leads John Bass out of bounds, but he has the reception. Similar play to the one that should have scored. John Bass gets off the press coverage. Fuqua's throw is a little offline, so it leaves John Bass up the sideline, but he has the first. Second and four with a minute 20 to go. Ethan Payne up the middle, eight yard rush, and he gets spun down inside the five and that leaves us with a first and goal breaking a tackle in the backfield Ethan Payne is gonna score boom really nice job three yard touchdown run good contact balance here by Payne on the stretch as he fights off the defensive end and no one else is out there on contain Ethan Payne into the end zone as we see the final studio update of the game as I would assume Washington 34 21 winners big time play by Sam Adams the second he rushes for 134 yards and a score Stanford gets upset North Carolina and Virginia Tech still tight in the first half. And Maryland up 21-14 on number four, Penn State. It's early. Those are some pretty interesting updates. Garbage time here for Gooden as they're just trying to make something happen. They're down two scores, 14-point lead for Marshall. 30 seconds left. Gooden under pressure, flipping it. And Eric Love has the INT. And it was already on ice, but this is deep freezed. Eric Love, pick six. Marshall's going to win this one, 45-24. Really nice play by Love, to be honest. He's out there in the zone coverage. 
It's cover three. Gooden, for the first time all day, gets pressured, forced into a bad rush decision, and it does not go well for him. And look at Rasheed Price here. Work off that right guard, finally apply some pressure. Gooden has had a wonderful day, but he's forced into a bad decision there. G freaking G. Marshall gets it done. My goodness, what a hell of a fight put up by Syracuse today. An all-time epic performance by Gooden. We have to start there with this recap. He goes 36 of 42, 85% completion percentage, 423 yards, three touchdown passes, and of course that garbage time pick six. He also adds another 58 on the ground. The 79 overall redshirt freshman was a problem for us today. I would have to check. That might be the single best stat line from a CPU quarterback against us in the entire series. Luckily, we had a run game to put this thing on ice and that key fourth down stop inside the two yard line by the defense. Huge, huge, huge for us. I mean, this was a seven point game with under one minute to go when Ethan Payne ran it in. They finished with 495 yards of total offense. They go 19 of 15 on third down conversions and score three times in the red zone on us. I honestly don't feel like we played that bad of a game, but we did let them climb back into it with giving up some huge chunk passing plays and it got much closer than anyone thought it would be. We sneak away with the 45-24 victory that looks much better on paper and more in control than it really was. Time to put that one behind us because it is rivalry week for Marshall in week 10. We host West Virginia, but first, bang! Three new guys have given their verbal commitment to us. Juco defensive tackle Hooper, Juco right guard Newell, as well as 66 overall depth tackle Kevin Snyder. Plus, we crushed visits for guys like Rogers, the four-star linebacker, and now we see we have three 78 overall or better wide receivers that are ready to make their visits. What a solid week for us on the trail again. Marshall continues to be the team to beat on the trail, the top class in the country, now up to 15 total recruits. We added some guys that aren't going to really affect the recruiting rankings in these JUCO players that are three and two stars, but overall, they're going to have an impact on this roster next year, and this is becoming one of the best classes in Marshall history. Travis Rogers, the four-star outside linebacker, number nine overall from Gilbert, Arizona. He has not yet chosen us, but we do have a huge huge lead of 4,700 points over USC, and I think it is only a matter of time before he commits. Okay, on to the guys this week that we did get. Let's first talk about 80 overall Tyrone Hooper, three-star Juco prospect, the 46th ranked defensive tackle in the class, but his 80 overall rating is awesome. 82 strength, 85 acceleration at 6'4", 280 pounds. He's probably more of a finesse guy than anything else at this stage, but everything in those mid-70s ratings, I think if we can stash him with a red shirt ear and buy us a little time to have him in the program, he could become a starter by the time he's a senior. Staying at defensive tackle, Kevin Schneider. 6'4", 267, a three-star prospect from California. His play style is more balanced. He's the number 68 defensive tackle in the country. But to be honest, I think he might actually be a good candidate to go to defensive end. Needs to improve his strength. So obviously a project 66 overall. We're not going to ask him to contribute really early in his career. But I believe he's the fourth defensive tackle in this class that we are going to sign. We'll put him somewhere along the defensive line. I just don't know where yet. We also nail down the services of Ryan Newell, 6'5", 282, listed as a two-star JUCO prospect, the number 91 guard in the country. But again, another situation, he's 78 overall. There's no way there's 85 better guards in this recruiting class. 86 strength, 92 acceleration, 85 run block. We've been killing it at guard recruiting in the last couple cycles, so we won't ask Newell to play early either. So he'll probably get that redshirt year, give him a season or maybe two to develop, and then let him fight for a starting spot as a senior. But again, another solid piece to add to this offensive line. 15 total commits. We have 25 total scholarships to give out. Here's the next four guys coming to Marshall this week on their official visits. RJ Thompson, a four-star athlete. Roy Morris, a four-star athlete. We will see him in town with the two big pieces. Five-star wide receiver Isaiah Seward. He is an absolute stud. And so is five-star wide receiver George Miller. So two top 10 wide receivers in the class are coming for a official visits this week. I guess a win over Kansas State is better than a home win against Syracuse that looks shaky. The committee swaps us around with Florida this week. They move into the number one spot. We settle in at number two. Not a big deal. Only really care about being in the top four anyway. Penn State and Georgia hold on to their spots. Northwestern up two spots after winning at Iowa and Akron. Up to number nine is Maction. Keeping it going. They get the 66-58 win in overtime over Central Michigan. So it is a wild college football playoff top 25. 
Well, that's going to do it for this episode. You guys, thank you so much for watching and for all the love and support on this series. Marshall taking on the Mountaineers next week, a big rivalry game that is being renewed because of our addition into the ACC alongside of WVU. We'll get into the history and the hatred of that series a little bit in next week's episode. I'm just happy to get through the Syracuse game and keep it moving. Be sure to like and subscribe. I appreciate all the love and support on this series. Until the next one, take care of yourselves. Peace.